morning everyone. The work that I carried out for DST project is axle load analysis for national highways. As we all know that traffic data is the most critical input for payment design and is associated with highest uncertainty. And so for this project, I have collected almost 10 national highways traffic and axle load data from VR Technic Delhi and l and IDPL Chennai. So these are the, this is the outline of my presentation. I will be dealing with how the traffic is uh, analyzed in IRC Tharsa in 2012, then the overloading analysis of highways, axle load distribution spectrum, and finally the, discuss, the discussion. So before getting into my work, let me ask you, what are the traffic data that are required for designing a pavement? It is the total traffic volume, magnitude of axles, axle configuration, tire pressure, and speed of the vehicle. But do we actually collect all these data for our payment design? No, we do not, especially the last two. We assume that the vehicle tire pressure to be 560 kPa and the speed of vehicle is assumed to be 80 km per hour. But we all know that the vehicles that are plying in Indian highways are not plying at 80 km per hour, but they are plying at much uh, lower speeds and uh, the tire pressure is uh, very higher also. Since these two parameters contribute much uh, damage to our payment, we need to collect these two data as well for our payment design. And my next question is, is 24 by 7 data sufficient for a payment design? No, not at all. Why is it so? It's because uh, with an example I can tell you this. If, I, if we are designing a payment for say uh, for 10 years for uh, 100 MSA traffic, we are expecting the payment to be failed. The, uh, we are expecting that this 100 MSA will reach at the end of 10 years. Uh, but we see premature failures to our payment. That is within 3 to 4 years, we can see that our payment has rot or uh, fatigue cracking might have occurred. So, what we understood from this is that this 100 MSA has already reached well before the design life that is within 3 to 4 years it has already reached. So we need to collect data in order to find out when the premature failure is going to happen. So 24 by 7 day data is not at all sufficient for maintaining or designing a pavement. So let us see how this traffic, is, traffic and axle load data is handled in India. So IRC 37 2012, the flexible payment design guideline for India demands only two traffic input, that is the AADT data and the axle load data. A 24 by 7 day traffic survey for the commercial vehicles is done to collect the AADT data and from with the help of table 4.1 from IRC 37, uh, the minimum percentage of commercial vehicle to be surveyed will also be obtained and the axle load data collection is carried out. And uh, the vehicles are allowed to pass through pressure pads, that is the axles of the vehicles are allowed to pass through the pressure pads and thus the axle load data is being collected. So now let us see about the IRC3 which stipulates the dimensions and weights of the vehicles in India. So we can see that no tridom axle vehicle is seen uh, in this in this code and it also shows the legal axle load limits for these vehicle types. Since no tridom axle vehicles are seen, we cannot expect the legal axle load limit for tridom axle in this code. So let us see what all are the vehicle types that are seen in India. So we see that most of them are with tridom axles, but we do not know their legal axle limits. Unfortunately, in IRC 37, it has mentioned the tridom axles in IRC 37 for the uh, calculation of equivalence factors. This is the legal axle limit for the axle, different axle types uh, found in India and uh, the first three shown here uh, is from IRC 3 1983. And for this project alone, 
I used 24 tons as the legal axle limit of the triadum axle. I, I took it from the American standards. So now if we are, so we got the traffic data, axle load data, everything. So we need to know what are the ways to handle this axle load data. So the first approach is considering the actual loads, actual axle loads in the field, uh, which is uh, which is done in a software known as uh, Ashtoware, uh, which follows the MEPDG guidelines. And you will get to know more about this from Dr. Nivida's talk, that is the coming talk. And I will be dealing with the second way to handle the axle load data. That is the entire traffic is converted to the number of load repetitions of standard axle load of 80 kilo Newton. And we use equivalence factors for this conversion. So what is this equivalence factors? That is equivalent axle load factor is nothing but it is the damage per pass of the axle considered to the damage per pass of a standard axle load. And the equation for finding out this is also shown here. Then how can we express this damage? As per IRC 37, we have only two damages considered. That is the fatigue damage and the rutting damage. The horizontal tensile strain acting at the bottom of the bituminous layer is responsible for the fatigue damage and the vertical compressive strain acting at the top of the subgrade is responsible for the rutting damage. So, uh, we, uh, so we need to know what all are the different approaches to calculate this equivalent standard axial load. So the first approach is vertical damage factor approach. This is as per IRC 37 2012. And the next approach is by the truck factor approach. This is in uh, Asphalt Institute method. And the last approach is the load spectra factor approach, uh, which, is, uh, which is by Prosy and Hong. So what is this vehicle damage factor? Vehicle damage factor is a multiplier that converts all the, uh, all the vehicles, all the commercial vehicles with different axle configurations and axle loads to the number of load repetitions of a standard axle load of 80 kN. And this is an axle type approach. That is, if we are getting a traffic data, we will first strip the axle, uh, we will first strip the data of the axles alone and then we will classify them based on axle types and the frequency distribution of this axle, axle data is being done. And using this formula, we will calculate the VDF. So FI is the EALF of the ith axle load group. M is the number of axle type considered. Ni is the number of passes of the ith axle load group. So this is how the VDF is being calculated. Let us see how the truck factor approach does this job. So in the truck factor approach, which is a vehicle type approach in which we do not classify them based on axle type. We classify the tra entire traffic data based on vehicle type. So consider uh, a typical Indian truck and uh, we are now trying to find out the truck factor for this. Uh, so for example, this is a typical Indian truck in which this is the uh, EALF equivalent axle load factor for the rear axle and uh, this is the EALF for the front axle and finally adding it up, we will get the truck factor for this truck. Similarly, for other truck types also, we will do the same and thus we are calculating the truck factor. So now let us compare truck factor and vehicle damage factor. Truck factor, truck factor does a good job. It's because uh, truck factor, if we are considering truck factor, we can actually consider growth factors since uh, it is a vehicle type approach. But VDF cannot do this process. So now let us see what all are the issues that are relevant to India. Availability of traffic and axle load data is really a problem. We do not have sufficient data to design our payment or to maintain or monitor our payment. That is, th that is the problem that, is we, that we are facing. And we see many non-standard axle combination of vehicles plying in Indian highways. And the problem in handling the available axle load database itself is another problem. So for this project, 
I, uh, in the beginning itself, I told you I collected almost 10 national highways data from uh, VR Technique Delhi and LND IDPL Chennai. And uh, those highways are being marked here. And for this uh, presentation, I will be explaining only about the axle load analysis of NH13, uh, which runs from uh, Solapur in Maharashtra to Mangalore in uh, uh, Karnataka. And the uh, axle load data is uh, taken at the uh, hospital Chitradurga stretch. So before getting into my uh, core analysis, let me explain to you what is overloading. The thing is like I have performed some overloading analysis. So this is a typical Indian truck in which uh, the steering axle is seen and the uh, tandem axle is there in the rear axle. And uh, the legal axle limit of the uh, each axle types is also shown there, shown here. And uh, the gross load for this vehicle, legal limit of this vehicle is also shown here. One observed load is as this. So since uh, this load uh, exceeds uh, the legal limit, we call this as an overloaded truck. But I have a question here. We saw, a uh, we saw a truck with uh, overloaded, gross vehicle weight overloaded. But if gross weight of a vehicle is not overloaded, does this imply that all the axles of that vehicle are not overloaded? No, it is not. Let me tell you with an example. So the same example I am taking and uh, another absurd load of the same vehicle type is shown and we see that the gross load is not overloaded. But look at the tandem axle, it is still overloaded. So we need to perform axle type overloading analysis as well as vehicle type overloading analysis. So this is the result I got uh, uh, while I did the axle type overloading analysis. So we see that the tandem and tridem axles are almost overloaded. This is as per the vehicle type overloading analysis. Here also we see that the tandem and tridem axle combination kind of vehicles are almost fully overloaded. So we just now got a general idea about how much percentage of the vehicles are overloaded. But we do not know how much extent it is overloaded. So I performed an, over, uh, an analysis on this and uh, average overloading ratio factor is being calculated. This is as per Venn et al procedure. Average overloading ratio is nothing but it is the average, it is the ratio of the average weight of the axles divided by the legal axle weight. So it is being plotted here and uh, we can see that the tandem axles are 6 point, almost 6.5 times overloaded considered to the legal axle limit. So now the design traffic which is computed using the diff, uh, VDF and the truck factor methods is shown here uh, for uh, with overloading and without overloading approach. So what is this with overloading and without overloading approach? With overloading is nothing but I have considered the actual axles in the field for calculating the ESAN. But without overloading is nothing but again I have brought down those, ax, uh, those weights those overloaded weights to the legal axle limit and then perform the analysis. So this is the, so these are the values we got for uh, NH13 highway. And uh, now coming to the shortcomings. So VDF and truck factor approaches are merely an averaging approach. Why do I say that? It's because I told you, uh, for I will tell it with the VDF example. So in VDF I told you that the, it considers axle type, it's an axle type approach. So we will plot the frequency distribution for each of the axle types and as per IRC 37, for each of the axle types they have mentioned what should be the load bin size, load bins. That is for steering axle or that is for the single axles it should be 1 ton, tandem axles it should be 2 tons, tridem axles it should be 3 tons. So the data I showed here that is the first graph is as per IRC 37. That is I plotted the frequency distribution of uh, uh, the steering axle with the load bin of 1 ton. 
So we got it in this manner. Okay. So the next one is I plotted it with the load bin size. I just varied the load bin size to 0.25 tons. So I got it in this manner. What we will understand from this? We will get an idea that the as the load bin size varies, the uh, as the load bin size varies, we can see that the actual axle loads in the fields are not considered in these two approaches. So let me explain to you. So this 6 tons, uh, so as per this graph, uh, 175, almost 175 vertical uh, axles are there with 6 tons. But here look, when the load bin size varies, it's only about 30 vehicles are there in 6 tons. So we are actually underestimating or overestimating our design with this VDF for truck factor approach. So we need to have an alternative method or we should find out some way to uh, cope up with this. So let us fit it with some probability density functions so that we can actually collect, actually uh, consider the entire axle loads in the field as such. So uh, the steering axles and single axle dual wheels are being fitted with the Weibull distributions. And uh, we fitted the data. So we need to know how to con uh, connect it with our payment damage. So load payment damage is actually mathematically related, equivalent to the moment statistics of the axial load distribution. So as per Prosy and Hong approach, we have a load spectra factor. And its equation is also shown here. If f of x is nothing but the probability density function, which we use to uh, fit the data. So with this approach, you will get the another factor known as load spectra factor. And thus, we calculated the ISAL value for VDF approach, truck factor approach, and LSF approach. I have included uh, two highways here in order to uh, give you an idea about the uh, variation in this VDF truck factor and LSF approach. We see that. Uh, the load spectra factor approach uh, will give almost similar value to that of VDF and truck factor approach in case of NH13. But in case of NH58, it shows a much higher value compared to VDF and truck factor. It all depends on the traffic data in the field. We, this VDF and truck factor approach can overestimate or underestimate or sometimes it can show similar values. It all depends on the data which we obtain from the field. It, is, it all depends on the trend of the data which we obtain from the field. So finally, uh, we got an idea that load spectra factor approach can serve a good job uh, in finding out the equivalent standard axial load. So finally, the discussion, IRC 3 1983 code requires revision. That is the tridom axial legal limit should be incorporated. And most of the vehicles flying in Indian highways are overloaded. We should, we, it is we who should design for this uh, vehicles to fly over the pavement. And uh, load spectra factor can prevent the underestimation or overestimation of the traffic data. And I thank DST for funding this project. And I thank we are Technic Delhi and LND IDPL Chennai for sharing the traffic and axle load data with me. Thank you.